Hello and welcome back. Today we will discuss lecture 3-2 on root locus analysis. The objectives of today's lecture are to describe the root locus of a control system, to explain the purpose of root locus analysis and design, to review the five rules for creating a root locus plot, to use the rules to sketch the root locus for a control system, and to determine the range of k values for a control system to be stable and identify them on a root locus. Root locus is a plot of the closed loop poles of a control system on the S-plane as a parameter of something such as the controller gain k as it's varied. Root locus provides a more useful measure of stability than Routh Hurwitz because it shows more than just a range of values for a variable gain. Root locus provides characteristics of a control system's natural response and can be used to design for certain system characteristics such as percent overshoot, settling time, and peak time. If it is not possible to vary the gain of a system to meet a desired transient response, then it will be necessary to add a compensator or controller to the system. For the following control system, we have the input R of S, the output Y of S, the compensator K, which is just a simple proportional controller, the plant G of S, and the feedback sensor H of S. So recall that the closed loop transfer function is T of S is equal to Y of S over R of S equals K G of S over one plus K G of S H of S, and the open loop transfer function, which is Y one of S over R of S, is simply K G of S H of S. The closed loop transfer function depends heavily on the open loop transfer function. The poles and zeros of G of S and H of S are the open loop poles and zeros. The poles and zeros of Z of S are the closed looped poles and zeros and roots of the characteristic equation. The characteristic equation creates a magnitude and angle criterion that can be used to create the root locus. 1 plus k g of s h of s equals 0 yields k g of s h of s equals negative 1, which means that k is equal to 1 over the magnitude of g of s h of s. This is the magnitude criterion. The angle criterion is the angle of g of s h of s is equal to a multiple of 180 degrees or 2k plus 1 times 180 degrees, where k is an integer between 0, 1, 2, etc. The five rules to sketch the root locus are based upon the magnitude and angle criterion and the open loop transfer function. The rules are given in table one. Rule one, loci branches. The root locus is symmetric about the real axis. The curve start at each of the end poles of the open loop transfer function for k equals zero, and approach the m zeros of the open loop transfer function as k approaches infinity. Excess poles loci extend infinitely far from the origin. Excess zeros loci extend from infinity. Rule two, real axis segments. The loci includes all points along the real axis to the left of an odd number of poles and zeros of the open loop transfer function because of the angle criterion. Rule three, asymptotic angles. As k approaches infinity, the branches of the locus become asymptotic to straight lines with angles theta equal the quantity 2k plus one times 180 degrees divided by alpha, where alpha is equal to n minus m or the number of poles minus the number of zeros. Rule four, centroid of the asymptotes. The starting point of the asymptotes is on the real axis at sigma equal the sum of the n poles minus the sum of the m zeros divided by alpha. And finally, rule five, break away in entry points. Loci leave the real axis at a gain k, that is the maximum k in that region of the real axis. Loci enter the real axis at the minimum value of k in that region of the real axis. Based upon this fact, the maximum or minimum value of k can be found by finding the first derivative of the open loop transfer function. So this would be one plus k g of s h of s, rewritten as one plus k n of s over d of s set equal to zero. So you take the derivative of k with respect to s and you get n times the derivative of d with respect to s minus d times the deri derivative of n with respect to s, which simplifies to the polynomial n of s d prime of s 
minus n prime of s d of s equals zero.